Warning, this project contains high voltage. I take no responsibility if you go bang. Welcome to Fuzzy Tech, the show where I, Fuzzy Manners, talk about technical, geeky, nerdy stuff. In the last episode, I showed how to build a Nixie Tube project onto a breadboard, ready for testing with some LEDs. In this episode, I'm going to continue with the Nixie project by showing the Arduino code and talking through what it does, as well as showing you the outcome on the breadboard itself. So, without further ado, Let's get going. For writing the code, I'll be using the Arduino IDE. This can be downloaded from the Arduino website at www.arduino.cc. So, to start off, I've included the wire file. This is so the Arduino can talk to the real-time clock via the two pins that we connected it to. Then, we have the RTC library itself. After this, we can move on to set up the pins. These are the physical pins on the Arduino that we have connected our chips to. They all need to be defined so the chip knows what's where. The latch, data and clock pins that you see here are all connected to the shift register so that it can send the data to it and tell it to output it when needed. We then have the two standalone Nixie chips that we're using for the hour digits. These have four pins each, A, B, C and D. They're used to tell the chip which number we want the tube to display. We then move on from the pins to some variables which hold the individual digits from the hours, minutes, seconds and the date. For example, if the time was 11.30 pm, then variable hour digit one would be one. Hour digit 2 would also be 1. Minute digit 1 would be 3. Minute digit 2, 0, and so on. The next line, the date button, is referring to Arduino pin 0. This means we can connect a button to this pin. When the button is pressed, it connects pin 0 to ground, activating the button. I'll talk more about this shortly. Now, onto the setup section. This and loop, which we'll see soon, are required by the Arduino in order for it to compile the code and program the chip. The setup section runs once when the device is turned on before it moves on to the loop. In setup, I have set the chip pin numbers that were used in the earlier variables to outputs. In this case, it's pins 1 to 13. The button pin that I mentioned earlier is an input, so this is set next. It's also set as default high which in simple terms means that something will happen when it's connected to ground, or low. The next two lines just initialize and start the real-time clock libraries that were mentioned at the beginning. And then comes the loop section. Loop, as well as setup, is also a requirement of the Arduino IDE. Everything that is placed in this section runs continuously until the device is turned off or interrupted in some way. This section is where the magic happens. The real-time clock is read using the RTC library and each digit is separated and stored in its variable. This line about the hours simply outputs the hour digits to the two Nixie chips that aren't connected to the shift register. The next part is for the date button. It basically says if the button is pressed, send the month and year to the shift registers and send the day to the hour chips. As these are the first Nixie tubes you will see, it results in day day, month month, year year displayed on the tubes. The delay 6000 needs to wait 6 seconds before moving on to the next line. Here it is demonstrated on the breadboard LED setup. As you can see, the LEDs are currently counting the time. If I press this button, which has one side connected to ground, and the other to Arduino pin 0, the date will be displayed on the LEDs for 6 seconds before returning to the time. I'm not going to go line by line through the whole code, but I'll briefly talk about the casino function. I've included this so that the Nixie tubes don't suffer from what's called cathode poisoning. Cathode poisoning is where some of the digits of the tube aren't used for a period of time, and the coating on them starts to thicken when other digits are lit. Eventually, this can cause the digit to no longer illuminate. To prevent this, I've included the function named Casino. This will randomize all the numbers on the Nixies approximately every minute. 
Now we've talked about the code, let's see it all in action on the breadboard. The K155ID1 chips, that I've decided to call Nixie chips, don't have their number pins in numerical order, so you may refer to the legend on screen so you know which LED represents which number. You can also see the casino function working. There's also a digital clock, so you can see the time as it's displayed on the LEDs. But bear in mind that it's subject to many changes and tweaks as the project moves on. I recommend taking a look at it now, and then again when the project is complete. In the next episode, I'll be moving on to creating the Nixie enclosure and wiring up the tubes. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye bye.